Hey guys, so recently I provided that top cut breakdown of YCS Bologna of the most played hand traps and staples in the topping deck list. So this time around, as usual, we're going to do more of a tier list of the best hand traps and staples using that information from YCS Bologna, but as well as uh, the cards that are most played on Dueling Book. And don't forget, you can definitely go check out my uh, discount codes for Yu-Gi-Oh! sleeves or singles or sealed product. Uh, you can definitely check all of those out in the video description. Alright, so let's just start with the tier list for this month, and we at number 1 have Nibiru. Uh, so as you can, uh, if you watch my YCS Top Cut Breakdown, this was actually the most played hand trap in the topping deck list, and I was kind of saying how I was a little bit surprised, I mean don't get me wrong, yes it's a good card, I was kind of surprised it was the most played hand trap because before that, we actually had Droll as being uh, number one, which was kind of understandable, but for the most part, it's usually Ash. Uh, it, it is still good against, uh, let's say, like Rescue Ace. Uh, it's one of the best decks, and uh, uh, Nibiru can be uh, pretty impactful, although, of course, they kind of try to play around it with, like, you know, SP and trying to banish their, a couple of their monsters so that they just get them back at the end phase. Uh, again, something like, let's say, like Unchained has been pretty good, but to be honest with you, I feel like anytime I uh, Nibiru and Unchained player, they still manage to find a way to get to, like, Caesar, anyways. Uh, so, I don't know. I think it's not, like, necessarily uh, game ending by itself uh, usually you want to pair it with a hand trap but at the very least if you really had to pick a hand trap that can be you know the most impactful uh, Nibiru is definitely gonna be one of the top candidates uh, and then of course speaking of Ash I mean it's there like it's really not surprising like any uh, cards that are gonna be listed in this kind of a section is basically like cards that you're probably gonna uh, assume that your opponent is playing uh, just because of how generic this is and really hits a lot of decks and even some of the newer decks right like let's say like fire kings like there are definitely some good ash targets from at least what I was told uh, at least I guess with like Ponix or Garou for example uh, and then you also have Imperm uh, again uh, because of like rescue Ace, turbulence uh, effect negation like Imperm, Valor and Ghost Mourner have become very very popular lately and even with some of those newer strategies as I mentioned something like let's say Centurion uh, Imperm can be very very good as well as well as even like uh, Fire King as well which has recently come out so next we have Feather Duster, honestly, I mean it's just usually the most played staple among any topping deck lists, uh, so really not much of a surprise, there's no real drawbacks to playing this card. Uh, and then we of course have Droll rounding out this A section, and you know this, prior to YCS Bologna, this was definitely the most played hand trap. Uh, this time around wasn't as played, but still in a br pretty good amount of lists, of course. Uh, Manidium surprisingly, I don't think topped at YCS Bologna among the top 64 decks, which you know, otherwise, if that was a very popular deck, uh, at least at like a uh, topping level, which it normally is, has been. Uh, Droll is really, really good and honestly quite, quite mandatory in that respect. So moving on to the B tier, we have Talents, of course, it's a very, very good card. It's not necessarily in every deck list, like 60% of the topping deck list. That's still a pretty good amount, though. A uh, really, really strong card uh, really punishes you for hand trapping your opponent to try to uh, keep them from building a crazy board, but instead you uh, backfires and they like hand loop you and you are in a far uh, worse situation than what you started out with. Uh, next we have Valor, which of course, you know, as I mentioned with Imperm, you know, effect negation is going to be pretty good right now with Turbulence, uh, even Centurion, as well as, you know, Fire Kings, and of, of course, I forgot to mention, like, Pearly, uh, Imperm Valor can also be good, uh, as long as they weren't, like, special summon and they had, like, the field spell up already, uh, but nonetheless, it can be pretty good against something like Labyrinth, obviously not very great, uh, but for the most part, I think it has good use. Lightning Storm, this has definitely been the more preferable, like, board wipe of choice after Feather Duster, of course, uh, compared to Evenly Match, at least, uh, you'll see later, Evenly Match has fallen down quite a hard actually this time around even though it's pretty popular uh, at least for the last little while uh, we have Fenrir honestly if your deck can play it you're probably throwing this in it's typically seen in a lot of different variety of different builds um, so very very good card going first and second uh, can kind of play into draw so obviously you'll have to kind of sequence things a little bit differently uh, but nonetheless very good card to have especially to out something like floodgates that maybe you otherwise could not have uh, from your main deck at least uh, Bistros in general, like Druizorm usually sees a bit more play than Magmanot uh, nowadays um, just because of its sound effect which is very very strong against especially something like I guess like Unchained where it originally saw a lot of play and then you have something like Tealments that are still in the mix and even now like Centurion they actually have like Judea, Primera, like they're like light and dark so you know the Bistros can also come up especially when they're trying to uh, play some on the spell trap zone in the end phase so uh, it still can be uh, useful so seeing a pretty good amount of play. Call by the Grave, uh, nothing too spectacular about this one, I mean, uh, really, I, especially if you are a deck that loses hard to a certain hand trap, uh, you actually see this a uh, pretty decent amount going uh, in the side deck as well nowadays, just because they just put it in for going first, uh, in terms of like uh, stopping that hand trap, which for the most part is probably something like Shifter, because that card just will completely win the match uh, if they have it. 
Uh, and then we have DD Crow, similar to like Bishos. This has actually become even more and more popular lately, uh, especially because it's not like restricted to just light or dark monsters, or if anything, it's not even restricted to monsters in general in terms of banishing. So it can be pretty much useful, I think, against uh, most top strategies right now, right? Like against something like, you know, tier limits, of course. This is where, uh, before Bishos even came out, DD Crow was like a must uh, against tier limits. And you have something like, you know, Centurion again, uh, they try to place, uh, you have something like even Fire Kings, they kind of tend to float from like the graveyard. So being able to banish is nice against Pearly like whatever quick play that they target to try to see summon uh so it really really does come up uh, quite a bit nowadays uh, and then we have Phantasme. This has kind of had uh, some recent popularity. Of course, this was seen in Joshua Schmidt's uh, decklist as well that won the whole event. And he was talking about how he really wants to draw into like very powerful hand traps like Nibiru and Droll. Uh, can really, really fix hands. Obviously, this card is not nearly as good as it once was in Master Rule 4. Uh, but for now, you know, you have something like Unchain where I guess it's like very uh, link based. So uh, it does come up. Unfortunately, uh, like some hand traps out there, you know, of course, again, some decks, it's not going to be very good, right? There's uh, still a decent amount of top decks uh, in the current format where it's not a guarantee they're going to be uh, link summoning at least in their turn one board right where phantasm is like the most useful right like something like labyrinth like yeah i guess they have like muckraker plays but they're not really doing that all the time like turn one anyways uh as well as like fire kings they don't really use the extra deck all that much as well and any branded list of course they're not link summoning at all uh so definitely can uh just useful good when it's good uh against certain matchups uh, and then of course uh we have d bear <laughs> still a very very strong card not seeing too much wide play like still about over a fifth of the topping deck lists we're playing it so it's still uh, a noticeable amount and it's very strong against something like let's say pearly or any branded kind of strategies uh, against centurion they are synchro based uh, when i surveyed the centurion players they actually put this as the number one uh, floodgate that impacts them the most uh, although i guess they can still synchro someone on like the opponent's turn so i'm not sure uh but anyways uh hopefully this card finally gets hit on the ban list but i don't know it's dodged for so long maybe i'm not so hopeful uh, and then we have enemy controller. This has also been uh, pretty popular lately as well. On Dueling Book, though, really not seeing that much play, uh, interestingly enough. But uh, definitely can come up, especially just being able to tribute off a monster, uh, which some decks might not be able to afford. But in other cases, like it can really be useful. And especially if you're something, you know, let's say you're facing against like Makanko, uh, you get to tribute off uh, that um, uh, Acid Golem, which is always nice, and you can actually uh, finally start playing. Uh, you have something like Thrust, which surprisingly do not see as much play in the topping deck list this time around. Usually it goes hand in hand with Talents. Uh, I mean, it might have just been a one-off event. Maybe in the, I don't, I don't know when the next YCS event is, and I'll do a breakdown for that. But maybe we see the Thrust go back up there as well. Uh, for the most part, I like Thrust in that, you know, it makes going second a little bit uh, better and a better, bigger chance, I guess. And also just kind of, I guess, I don't know if I should say creative deck building, but at least, you know, you can play some one-offs that you can at least search off of Thrust. The only problem problem with thrust though is just going first where you let's say you hand trap your opponent and they set something like d barrier i think that's where it gets really really toxic so i'm not sure how i really feel about this card yet uh, and then we have super poly this of course you know is a given in any kind of branded deck list but nowadays actually you have non-branded deck lists that are playing super poly as well just because you have a lot of boards right now that can be super poly right like rest case or like a lot of fires or let's say if you're playing like guilty gear freed you have like some different kind of warriors on the board like baron or sp or maybe just infernal knights in general and also you have something like let's say like fire kings that are new uh that are also susceptible to su uh, super poly and most importantly well i wouldn't say most importantly but centurion is a notable one for super poly just because if you let them go into Calamity, you're probably just auto losing. So that's where Super Poly can come really, really clutch against that strategy. Uh, next, we have Book of Eclipse. So this is actually kind of seeing a resurgence in play again. Uh, it was very, very popular during uh, Cash Tier format. We still have like Pearly right now. So this can be uh, good against them to prevent them from like leap targeting their little, you know, the cat to uh, rank up text Pearly Noir. Uh, nonetheless, I think, uh, you know, against some strategies, maybe not as good, like especially if they're like link based, you know, what's this going to do? But uh, otherwise, it kind of can be you know, really good in terms of, you know, just shutting off like all your opponent's monsters if you somehow manage to get this to resolve at least. And then we have Cosmic Cyclone. I kind of thought this would be higher, as I mentioned in my YCS Top Cut breakdown. I mean, maybe in the next event, we'll keep seeing it rise. I mean, you have, you know, this, again, is good against something uh, like Centurion, which did have a decent amount of tops, but obviously not the overwhelming majority. Uh, but I think, you know, against, let's say, Labyrinth, that's still a really good deck. And being able to banish, uh, especially on, like, your end phase, when they try to set off their furnitures, uh, being able to just uh, quick effect snipe it is always really good. Against tier limits, uh, being able to banish is always nicer, just so they don't plus off their traps being popped as well. And again, something like Fire Kings, they do have like, let's say their continuous spell that can like exceed someone on your turn. Uh, you can stop that or even like their field spell, which if you do remove the field spell, it does nuke the whole board, which uh, from my, what I was told can be beneficial for them, uh, but sometimes not. And especially if they're on like the Tri-Brigade version of Fire King, then that really, I think, uh, messes them up. 
So next we have Droplets, which of course has not seen as much play as maybe people would have thought after Rise Heart got banned. I mean, I think it's still pretty good. It has uh, some uses, like against, let's say, when I surveyed them in Congo players recently, they really put this as like the number one card that they uh, kind of like most fearful of and has the most impact against the strategy. And Mikanko, while not like a tier one deck, it's definitely, I think, solid tier two, just because it's been constantly getting multiple YCS tops as well. And against uh, Centurion, uh, again, you want to avoid that Calamity Lock, and this can also be very, very good as well. Next, we have Solemn Judgment. This is definitely seeing some play uh, in terms of especially like decks that kind of lack an Omni in game and just going for us. Like, might as well if you can uh, have the space to fit it. Uh, just being able to stop any almost anything is usually pretty nice, uh, of course, at the cost of half of life points, which you can always pay at least. And then we have Ghost Mourner, which I kind of said about uh, earlier with Impermanent Veiler. Again, just effect negation, really good right now, especially with something like Rescue Ace being able to set for if you don't have any kind of negation. So I think uh, it's a pretty hand trap heavy format right now, and this is definitely one of the uh, rising popularity cards. And then we also have Pancratops, which is kind of like an old forgotten card, so it's not really... I mean, it's still good if you have like the flex spot. This is kind of like a good candidate always, just because it can do a lot of things. And even especially in this format right now, just being able to attack over SP very easily is also very nice and can just pop any kind of like monster or back row as long as if you're able to do it. Uh, next we have Shifter. So now, uh, just to clarify things, like these tier lists are based on, more so represented based on, you know, how often they're actually played, not necessarily how good they are. Because if you can play Shifter, of course, this should be in like A, like S tier, right? Because it's just so crazy strong. But the reason why it scored so low this time around, and usually, is because, you know, most decks cannot actually play Shifter. And that's kind of like the reason why it's like in this low. Uh, don't get it confused by, you know, me saying like it's a bad card or anything. Like it's really strong if you can play it. Uh, but even this time around, like, uh, of course, we did not have any, I don't think we have much of Flunder in the top cut that usually plays Shifter. But even some of the other decks that typically side Shifter sometimes, uh, even though they don't play optimally, like let's say like Pearly Rescues or some of the decks I usually commonly mention, uh, they weren't even really playing Shifter this time around either for like the tier limit matchup, I guess. Uh, so it wasn't as popular this time around, but I know it's still gonna stay around unless it gets banned, which I hope it does. And finally, I talked about this earlier, is Evenly Mad just really fell off this month uh, compared to last month. But even last month, I think it was already on the decline just because I think with like a lot of decks ending on SP, they can always like banish SP and another monster and they just get that back at the end phase. So they can kind of recover on the Evenly Match pretty well. Like Unchained, for example, has always been able to recover pretty well uh, through uh, Evenly. And, you know, T elements, they usually have like a couple um, Omni Negates, especially this is kind of, you know, post side when you're using Evenly, right? And they are going to have something like Crime as a counter trap to stop it. Against Rest Case can be really good. They can kind of recover as well. Uh, but nonetheless, I think they're prioritizing more so like playing around hand traps like Nibiru than like uh, board clearance But maybe that will change as well by the ne uh, next time we get to whatever the next YCS is So I think it's still uh, pretty strong, but definitely not nearly as good as it once was right now Anyways guys, though, that was it for the tier list of the best hand traps and staples for the, the current format. Of course, this is before uh, any kind of ban list. Uh, hopefully, it does come out soon. Uh, I'm just really, really waiting for it. We've hit that three-month mark, so uh, hopefully it's right around the corner. But anyways, in the meantime, thank you all so much for watching. Huge thanks to my patrons, as always, uh, for the continued support. And well, take care, guys.